Our top story this news day, the government has announced it will hand out $1,000 to business owners that hire older workers. The move has been welcomed by representatives of senior Australians, but the coalition claims the government has borrowed the idea from them. With an ageing population and cost of living going up, more older Australians are looking for a job. A report handed to the government in December found they face a range of barriers. Topping the list, age discrimination and a reluctance to hire candidates who may have been out of work for a long period and aren't up to date with technology. But failure to harness the potential of older Australians is costing the economy nearly $11 billion a year. Too many senior Australians have been locked out of the workforce by discrimination, by stereotypes and so on. And what we are going to do is to work with the business community to encourage them to hire more mature age Australians. In response to the report, the government is offering a bonus of $1,000 to be paid to employers who take on a worker aged 50. The payments are limited to 10,000 businesses and they must employ the older worker for at least three months. For older Australians looking for work, it's welcome news. Australia doesn't rate very well compared to other OECD countries in the participation of people over the age of 50 in the workforce. So it's really hitting people who still are work workforce eligible. The opposition says it's a good idea. So good, in fact, that they thought of it first. It was coalition policy. Uh, I just wish uh, uh, that uh, we'd had the chance to put this policy effectively in place straight after the last election. Uh, I very much regret that uh, the Australian people will have to wait uh, much longer than would otherwise have been the case uh, for this good policy to be put in place. The older workers' bonus will cost $10 million over four years, but it could also save the government some money by reducing demand on the pension and boosting productivity. The bonuses will start from July. Christina Zaric, Sky News, Canberra. And joining me now for more from Sydney is Bronwyn Bishop, the Shadow Minister for Seniors. Bronwyn Bishop, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Isn't it right okay. that similar sorts of incentive programs like this have been tried with quite limited success in a number of countries overseas? Some Monash University experts have reported that overseas employers haven't actually taken up the incentives offered to any substantial degree. I think the uh, government policy announcement today is really a very poor imitation of the policy that we announced prior to the last election. And our policy was this, that should an employee, an employer, uh, employ somebody who is over 50, who is currently in receipt of a welfare payment, then we would pay them $3,250 if that person remained with them for six months. And if it was a part-time job, that would be prorated. Uh, this policy has the great sense and benefit of being six months for it to be um, fulfilled, uh, and that's a meaningful time for someone to be in employment. $1,000 for a three-month period can turn into a churn. But back to my question, though, is there any evidence actually showing that these sorts of incentive payments will actually work to increase the number of older Australians in the workforce? Some experts argue that these sorts of schemes that the government and the coalition are pushing actually risk deepening age prejudice and institutionalising that discrimination against older people. Well, they don't if they are done the way that we have said, and that is that if you take someone off welfare and put them into paid work, we have plenty of people who wish to be in the paid workforce over the age of 50, mature age workers, and there's plenty of evidence they're effective workers. For instance, if you tra retrain a mature age worker, you'll get six years of loyal service. If you retrain a, a younger worker, you'll get two years. So there are benefits all round. You are taking someone off welfare and putting them into uh, paid employment where they become taxpayers, which makes it a cost-efficient policy as well. Uh, and if you uh, look at the uh, numbers of older Australians who particularly wish to remain in full-time work or part-time work because of the uh, financial crisis and what they did to many savings, you will see it's a much-needed policy. How widespread is discrimination against older people here in Australia and why do you think that older workers do have such a bad rap that this sort of scheme is needed? Why should we need to pay companies for hiring older Australians when they do come with so much experience? 
Well, basically, uh, if you work for yourself, you'll work a lot longer. If you work in small business, you'll work a lot longer. If you work in a large um, uh, employment place, you're likely to work very much shorter. You can find yourself out the door at 57. The fact of the matter is that uh, there was a, a practice built up that when you had a great cohort of cheap baby boomers coming through for several decades, you could push a more expensive worker out and employ a cheaper one. That did not get replaced in terms of births being made. There is no longer a great bulge. So we need employers to get used to the fact that we need both younger and older workers to work together. And I'm working particularly with large employers, for instance, with IBM uh, and also with uh, the NAB, where they have good policies for keeping older workers in the workforce. And instead of the government's policy of an older worker mentoring a younger worker and then out the door when you've transferred your knowledge, we look at the policy of having shared mentoring. So you can have a mature age worker mentoring a younger one and a younger worker mentoring an older one with the aim that they both remain in the paid workforce. So it's a cultural change. And I've certainly said about doing that when I brought in my private members bill to end discrimination against people who are in the paid worker in the paid workforce who are 70 and over are uh, being discriminated against. Labor again was a slow learner and that in that area voted down my legislation but ultimately themselves had to copy it. Do you think that it would be a good idea to lift the pension age even higher than it already is being lifted? Well I'm very disappointed to hear the government unable to get out of its head uh, the fact that 65 is supposed to have some sort of meaning. When we were in government previously, and I was the Minister for Aged Care and in charge of the International Year of the Older Person, we abolished 65 as the compulsory retirement age for the public service. Uh, the fact is that uh, when my private members bill was brought in, it was designed to abolish 70 being a discrimination where an employer could choose whether or not to pay people their full superannu superannuation entitlements. This is a clear discrimination. It's still there. And under Labor, it won't go until 2013-14. But just to clarify, what is the Coalition's position on what the pension age should be? Because I think in the past, Tony Abbott has written that it could be should be lifted up to about 75 or so, but that's not actually coalition policy, is it? No, it is not. Uh, we, uh, we supported the raising of the pensionable age to 67, but the reason I gave you that other answer, Ashley, is it's important when you're talking about policies for workforce participation that you stop mentioning 64 and 65, which is what the Treasurer does all the time. He can't get it out of his head that people should be judged on being the best person for the job. It's my aim to make it as offensive to be, sexist, uh, to be ageist as it is to be sexist or racist. If we do that, we'll be truly inclusive and we'll bring a great benefit uh, for the Australian people and the workforce. Productivity will be, in, will be enhanced. Bronwyn Bishop, we do appreciate your time on Newsday this afternoon. Thank you for that. It's a great pleasure.